Now, in case you don't prefer to type entire XAML, there is another option that we have. One can very well generate the XAML and animations with the help of another tool called as Expression Blend. Expression Blend by default gets installed on your machine when you install Visual Studio. So by default, what one can do is, if you go to Windows Start menu and if you type for Blend, you will find out there is this icon, which is Infinity icon again which tells you blend for visual studio 2019 and then similar kind of you can say uh, uh, blend exists for other versions as well so when you click on this icon it starts the blend by default the theme it starts with is black theme and right now or dark theme now what we need to do is this is similar to visual studio only but then this is more important for xaml generation so what we are going to do now i'm going to click here on file new project when we click on new project it's going to show us default available templates so based on which version you are using you may see templates available for wpf there can be templates for silverlight which is no more there can be templates specifically for xbap applications or windows universal applications or if you have already installed xamarin then certain applications like windows phone or xamarin applications as well a templates availability depends on what you have installed during or what you picked up during the installation of visual studio so now we have this other option we are just going to go and pick up here wpf uh, application or we can pick up wpf user control library one more time so what i'm going to do i'm going to pick up wpf user control library one more time uh, using plain.net framework so it's going to be wpf user control library using dotnet framework so i should pick up here c sharp i should pick up here user control library using dotnet framework so now i'm going to click on next i'm going to name it as simple maybe animation or i'll call it as a demo animation and then we will be storing it somewhere in c users directory as it is and let's click on create so by default it is going to generate similar sort of xaml that visual studio generated earlier but then here xaml generation is going to be super easy so far we always typed the xaml there's also another way that we can uh, drag and drop certain controls in visual studio itself but then blend is very favorite for designers so here we go by default we have two tabs here as you can see one is xaml tab where an entire XAML can be coded one more time. There is this design window, which actually has got this uh, a layout, which tells you with the scale, like it tells you what's the size you are going to go and draw the control. By default, theme is dark. That's the reason the contents are not visible right now on the screen. But then right now I have an intention of getting some sort of completely geometrical elements on the screen then text box label or other controls so here is what i'll do the toolbox is little weird here what you can do is you can just click here for example i'm looking for a rectangle now what you can do is you can very well click here if you just click and hold your uh, mouse in that case you will find out the other shapes will also appear so if you hold the mouse here after clicking it will appear there is a rectangle there is an ellipse and there is a line that you can draw and if you just click here by default now a rectangle is selected and you can simply go and draw the rectangle over here so i've just drawn the rectangle it shows you how much amount of height and width in terms of uh, dip uh, it has uh, picked up then accordingly you can pick the color which is not that easy when it comes to code and then at the same time when it comes to some sort of transformation for example if i'm looking for render transformation default is render so if I just try maybe tilting it a bit, you will find out after holding this position, when the mouse cursor turns into these arrows, if I just tilt it, you will find out it has tilted immediately. And if I just go to XAML, you will notice it has automatically generated this much amount of code for me. It has written rectangle, it has put up a fill color, it has also picked up height and width, margin from the left, top, right, bottom, and it has actually gone for transformation and it picked up rotate transformation and angle is also automatically picked up 
there are other transformations it shows scale skew and translate transformation which right now we have not applied at all so now if i just go back to design there is an automatic generation of a code which you saw what if i need some more control i'm going to hold here a cursor i'll pick up ellipse now i'll get this ellipse drawn over here and then what i'm going to do is pick up another color as in solid color over here now these two controls that we have what i want to do is i want to move these controls from one place to another place and uh, in such a way that it should look like an animation and that too on a click of button so what i'm going to do now i am going to pick a button here i'm going to draw the button and then here on the light i'm just going to give a content to this button as in so name of the button is button itself rest of the contents are visible over here so let me call it as click me so this is the button name so what i want to do on a button click i want these two to move and cause some animation how do i do it normally animation when you see it is always typically well known as frame based animations so normally if you have seen cartoons you will always find out animations are made with the help of frame based animations or frame based uh, technique which means multiple number of frames in a very short interval of time are shown to you and that actually uh, you know looks like animation in case of wpf though the you can say frames are going to be uh, created but then we don't create those frames we will find out it is going to be timeline based animation what does that mean which means we will simply pick up a timeline of let's say 3 seconds and then at the start of animation we can simply specify when we start the animation what should be the position of the controls we can specify at so and so point during this 3 seconds at any point that we decide what should be the position of this controls at this this time and then accordingly how that transition of a control happens that is all left to wpf runtime so by making it to uh, what we call it as demonstration it will be more and more clear so what i want to do now i really want to have the animation recorded so what i'm going to do here i'm simply going to go to something called as objects and timeline so as you can notice here there is something called objects and timeline i am just going to click on plus here to create a storyboard storyboard in the sense the transformations are going to get recorded and those will be put up in some sort of series of or ultimately sequence series of transformations will be there along with time and then you will find out those transformations will form a storyboard so if i click on new storyboard by default it will ask me the name of storyboard let's call it a storyboard 1 itself if i click on okay by default you will find out now the recording mode is on as you can see the entire screen specifically the area which is form area is now surrounded with the red border now what we have to do is here you will find out a zeroth position of the controls these are the controls listed here and then now what we have is we have zeroth position all controls available over here okay this is the position of the controls i'm going to move the cursor or timeline to first second so from 0 to first second when i move what i want is i want this rectangle to move a bit down i want it to scale a bit i want this ellipse to rotate itself a bit i want this rectangle to shorten itself like this now this is simple transition from 0 to 1 second we can very well keep on moving this timeline from first second to second second or anywhere in between if we want it and then we can very well take this content here we can very well specify it should expand again and i want it to so called reduce in size again now this is the simple transition now if i just click on play button and try to test it it will show you how the transition looks like so if i click here you will notice this is how the animation looks like now what i want is I don't want this animation to happen only once. You can just simply select the storyboard and there is option available in case you wish to auto reverse it and in case you wish to repeat it. 
So how many times you want to repeat, you can specify 1x, 2x, 3x, like n and x kind of time, or you can simply mention forever. In the sense, it, it, you want to repeat it forever. And then you want it to automatically reverse as well. So if this is the, what we call it as storyboard, I'm just going to stop the recording by clicking here. And now I'm just going to show you the XAML. Now you can see here, there is some resource created, just like styling resource. There is a storyboard tag here. And then all you can say second by second or millisecond by millisecond, whenever changes happen, those are going to get recorded over here. And this particular so-called storyboard needs to be played at some time. Obviously, we want it to run on a button click. But by default, you will find out using some concept called as triggers, you will see that this particular animation, which is called storyboard one, is going to run whenever a window is going to get loaded by default. So right now we are not interested it to run on window load. We are interested to run the storyboard on a button click. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to design again. And over here, there is something called as triggers, as you can see. So I'm going to click on triggers now. By default, there is user control one loaded kind of a trigger is there. So I'm going to remove this from here. And I'm going to select now a button that we have here. So let me select the button. Let me specify here, whenever a button click event is raised, then I want storyboard one to begin. Had it been a C sharp code, I would have simply put up a code on a button one underscore click event handler. That's that is something storyboard one dot begin. So begin will be a method and storyboard one is going to be an object. So it's that simple. Only thing is now I'm not writing any C sharp code. The entire code written is in XAML itself, which means XAML itself can be a place specifically for writing some sort of event handles like this, which involves animation. So now you can notice here, a user control has got certain triggers. There's an event called button click, which is button uh, so and so click. This is normally the name of the button. And then which storyboard we would like to play is something called as storyboard one. So begin storyboard tag becomes a replacement for begin method in case of code behind that is C sharp. And then here something called as button base dot click ultimately button click will be the uh, code that we will uh, you know as an uh, handler we will end up handling in case of C sharp code behind. So right now I'm not writing any C sharp code what I'm writing is all XAML here. Can I run this application? So if I just click on start you will notice by default the user control is created as in DLL. So the issue that we got sometime back in case of Visual Studio, similar issue can be seen here. You can't actually run this DLL, you know, directly. This DLL needs to be referred. Okay, so what do I do now? Here is what I'll do. Now what we have to do is, we will have to go to Solution Explorer. We will simply have to compile this project. So I'm going to right click and say build here. So we have successfully compiled the project. Now I wish to open this project and open this DLL in Visual Studio. So if you right click on the project, you will notice there is an option called as edit in Visual Studio. I don't want to open another Visual Studio instance. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to our previous Visual Studio instance. And then just like we have these two projects available here, I'm going to add one existing project one more time. So this time I have a intention of adding that animation project into this existing project. Location was a bit different. So here is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to see the location of this demo animation project, which is a user control ultimately. This is the animation project location. Then I'm going to go to Visual Studio. I'm going to right click on WPF demo solution and I'm going to say add existing project. Now I'm going to simply put up here demo animation project path and demo animation project is what I'm going to open over here. Now you will find out user control one dot XAML over here, which has got same sort of controls, which we dragged and dropped some time back. And then the same animation is available now through code or through XAML in case of Visual Studio. So just like we developed some time back CC control, now we have developed animation control. If I just go and build it again, by default, you will find out when we open this in file explorer, there is going to be a bin, there is going to be a debug, and there is a DLL that we have now. Now this particular DLL is something that I am interested in 
in referring my 00 demo project. So 00 demo project had this Windows 7. And if you recall, what we did was we tried to refer that user control one over here. Now in similar manner, what I wish to do now, refer that animation control into WPF window. So here's what I'll do. I'm going to right click. I'm going to add one more window here in this 00 demo project. Let's add it as window eight here. And then I need to have that animation added over here. So what I'm going to do, how do I add it? So the very first thing we need to do is right click, add a reference to the DLL. So I'm going to browse here and pick up the path, which we copied earlier. It is demo animation DLL, which has got that animation DLL uh, animation control. If I click on OK, now you'll find out demo project has got reference to CC control and it also has got reference to demo animation. Now I need a demo animation user control to be added over here. How do I add it in this case? So for that purpose, what I have to do is I have to refer a namespace if you recall. So this time it is going to be XML NS, XML namespace. Let's call it as animation, which is going to be animation library. So I'll say animation library. And then I'm going to spell, simply put up here in double quote that demo animation path. So I'm referring the CLR namespace in the domain of XAML or XML namespaces. I'm referring it from demo animation assembly. Now, how do I start using it? In order to use it, what we have to do is we will have to write animation lib and then it is a user control one as it was a name before as well. User control one, give a name to it. Let's call it as, let's say my animation user control and let's close this. Now, this is part of a grid right now. Let's try running this project now. So I simply have added a user control in my project. And then what we'll do is, as usual, we will go to app.xaml. We will ensure that we are running window eight first. And now let's try running this project. So 00 demo project, I'll run one more time. And notice what we have here is the animation project. Remember, we made certain changes in the application sometime back. And those changes were, we made the animation automatically reverse and we made it run forever, which means if I click on the button now, you will find out the animation will continue running and continue reversing automatically. Normally, such things are very difficult to develop in case of Windows Forms application. Even it is difficult when it comes to writing a code, but then when it comes to generating a code, you will find out Windows Blend or Expression Blend is the ultimate solution that you will notice. So normally for graphs, for animations, Expression blend is what is preferred by developers over Visual Studio. I have made the importance of expression blend and simple timeline based animation clear through this demonstration.